Hello, my name is Project Lifestyle, also known as Joe, and today I have the privilege of interviewing Mr. Alex Crockford. Alex is a fitness model who's completed a number of challenges from half Ironmans, half marathons, marathons, and he's even completed a 24 hour burpee challenge in which he completed 5,500 burpees in 24 hours. He's transformed thousands of people's bodies and lives with his brand CropFit. From this, he has thousands of followers and millions of views on YouTube from all of his videos. He even had a viral video with him hugging people in London, which hit 22 million views. Alex, welcome to your interview. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to get into it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Alex, well, we'll just go straight into it. You, you've just been on the front cover of Men's Fitness. What an achievement. I mean, yeah. How does that feel, first of all, to be on the front cover of, of a magazine which has been your dream? Um, well, I'm still kind of speechless just looking at it. Like, it is breathtaking. I'm sure it's, I'm not the only teenager boy that had the goal to be on the cover of Men's Fitness magazine. Um, and yeah, it's just years and years of hard work and like just seeing it in my mind to then having it in front of me and being able to hold it is just the most incredible feeling. Like, I'm massively ambitious, so I have this weird thing that when I achieve something, I'm just like, okay, yeah, and then I'm on to the next. But there are a few things in my career where I still kind of look at it randomly and think, wow, how, how the hell did I do that? And this is one of those things, like, I do have it framed up in my, <laughs> up in my room, in my office to make me realise that things in my mind, when I first think that they're impossible, and I see that they're possible, it just gives me the motivation every single day to think whatever else in my mind first seems impossible, I can achieve it at some stage. So yeah, it's incredible. It, it's, it's a great achievement. I mean, what, what got you into fitness? I mean, how does it all start? You've got all these challenges from marathon and and all the burpees and yeah. half marathons, four tough mudders I've got here, and you've yeah. done a London so to solo recycle even. I mean, what yeah. got you into fitness? What got you into all this? Um, well, it all started with, well, I think sports and fitness was always my strength compared to <laughs> academics and writing and things like that. So from school and college, it was always pushed into sports and fitness direction. And it wasn't until university that I started to um, study as a personal trainer and uh, sports science, etc. So that interest took me um, straight into personal training. And as I was a kid, I was always in football and basketball and, and all sports at quite high competitive levels as well. And I was always loving that challenge. Um, so then I went into personal training. And then from there, there was an interest to achieve fitness model goals as well as helping other people achieve the fitness that I've achieved myself. And then with the challenges, it's, um, yeah, I think it's just a continuous um, challenge in my mind to push myself in a new direction, in a new field, in a new way. Not only to see what I'm capable of, but uh, finding ways to motivate others um, through the internet or the people around me to see, wow, Alex is really pushing himself. He's going for something crazy or something big. So I hope that that inspires other people to do the same thing. What would you say was your, your hardest challenge mentally, considering everything you've done, what was mentally the hardest challenge? Without a doubt, it's the burpees. 24 hours of burpees, um, ch proper chest to floor, it was, a, it was a Guinness World Record attempt, and yeah, I mean, 24 hours of anything, I'm sure, is incredibly hard, but yeah, I mean, the mental focus and the, the mental resilience needed for that is unlike anything I've had to do, what, ever. What do you think about when you go through a challenge? I mean, when you're doing it over and over again, I mean, what's going through your mind when you're, when you're at your toughest, darkest moments? What, what keeps you going to complete this challenge? Um, a few things. I think the um, uh, keeping in mind the end, the finish, and knowing that there is an end and um, having that focus to stay there, that was always on my mind, but also what I was doing it for. I was lucky enough to have incredible people around me, um, as well as it being documented on social media and the internet, so I had the accountability of other people around me, and I didn't want to stop. But also, the money for charity that we raised, and the people that I was doing it for, which was Mind Charity for Mental Health, so the association with me pushing my mind for just 24 hours, compared to people who have to live every single day with a mental health issue. 
Um, I, re I just thought this is nothing. This is nothing in compared to the grand scheme of things what people have to do. Um, and I knew that putting myself in pain and showing the world how hard I was working, I knew that I'd raise more money. And I did, because people were like, oh my God. <laughs> they, people went to bed, woke up, and Alex is still doing burpees. So, you know, that helped them give some money. And how much did you raise in total then? Did you about 9,000 pounds. Wow, so it was, it was a, a good 24 hour stint of wow. <laughs> fundraising. So yeah, it was incredible. So you mentioned about the social media aspect of that. Yeah. Um, and I, I know that you started social media stuff in 2014. Uh, Probably, and you yeah. even had a viral video. Um, yeah. And now you've got thousands of, of followers. I mean, your Instagram's got 160 odd thousand. You've yeah. got millions of views on, on Facebook. And you even had um, a viral video, which we'll yeah. talk about in a minute. I mean, how did, you, how did you start? How did your social media start? Yeah. And how have you grown from this? I think, um, well, everybody had Facebook for a while. And then I think, um, was it you that set up my Facebook account? My profile? I think, I think Don't be so humble. I wasn't think you did. But, um, but Instagram, I think I wasn't late to, to Instagram, but um, I definitely wasn't first. But I think I was personal training, I was full time personal training, Instagram was around. So I just started using it as documenting photos and I started to want to be a fitness model and get an agent. So I was posting photos and like workout ideas and stuff. And as all of that progressed, I just, I just saw um, what benefit it had to um, helping people as well as document what I was doing. And you know, it's like, it's kind of addictive. And um, I saw the benefit of how it was helping people. And then that just gradually progressed from personal training less to fitness modeling more and growing a community. And that community building across the world with the CropFit business is, um, yeah, it just kept on going, not just on Instagram, but Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, so now I see myself as social media as being like, like half of my day's work, like in, wow. like in every single day. It's like being a media company, like creating content, putting it out there. Um, it's hard work, but so rewarding seeing how you're impacting people's lives around the world. Yeah. And, and you mentioned about your Instagram, I mean, how did you start and what advice would you give to a new person starting an Instagram account? What, what advice would you give to them to grow it as successfully as yeah. yours and to obtain and keep those followers just like you have? Yeah, a few things. It's um, consistency, just like any result in anything, you've got to be consistent with it. Like some people ask me that question, I look at their account and they haven't posted for a week. You've got to be posting daily, regularly, so people see you, but also, when I, whenever I lose creativity in what to post or what to say, I always strip it back to what is this about, and that is giving value to people. So don't do it to just show off, or don't do it to boast about something, but whoever's gonna read it or see it, what are you giving them? What, are you, what is that person able to take away from it? And so it's all about giving value to the person. Um, and other than that, just um, being passionate, being true, being authentic, um, because then it really shines through and people know when you're being fake. Mm -hmm. So I think those three things are, right. are the most important. I mean, for people that don't know, I mean, me and Alex have been friends for quite a long time. And, and like you said, I, th I think we might have set his Facebook up together and stuff like that. I mean, we've always been in touch ever since our days going to primary school. Um, so obviously I know how the free hugs video yeah. occurred. So <laughs> let's talk about that. And um, how did you feel during it? What made yeah. us do it? Um, and also, how did it become so viral, and, yeah. and how did it go from an overnight to 22 million views on Facebook? Yeah. Let's talk about that. Well, you're being humble again. It was Joe's idea, and Joe's recording and, and uploading, etc. And at that point, yeah, it was your idea, and I was like, uh, yeah, okay, I guess we'll do it. My following was much lower. There was barely any risk compared to doing it now. People saying, do it again. I'm yeah. like, oh, I don't know, because having the following and doing something, there's, there's risk. But back then, I had barely anything on Facebook or anything else. So we went out and did it. And um, I think I, I kind of love the spotlight. I don't mind being in front of people. I was no, clearly, I just like, jumping clearly... here. You were very nervous. <laughs> I was, I was nervous. You're confident now. You were really nervous on the day. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll well, I think kind of get... Complete, I didn't mind complete transformation to now. <laughs> Thank you. I think... Yeah, I have gained some confidence and confidence in front of the camera compared to back then. But still, I think 
um, being topless in front of people, I wasn't that nervous about it. It was more just being out in public, yeah, doing something crazy like that. But once the ball started rolling and people were coming for hugs and it was, it ha we were having a lot of fun, then it was fine. In regards to the video, um, it was a great video right from the very start. And I think it wasn't an overnight success. I think it was a, a gradual thing. And then when it gained momentum on YouTube and Facebook, it just went to millions of views and it had an impact on my following, especially Facebook at the time, because that's where it went viral first. Um, so I got a big following on Facebook quite quickly and that gave me a really strong foundation to work upon from there. And people still now, mm -hmm. like obviously I'm gaining followers every day, but there are a group of people that be like, I followed you from the Free Arts campaign. There's a, like a Brilliant. select group that like, Brilliant. I remember those days from back yeah. then. So it's nice to have those original people that have seen the journey from there. I mean, the funny thing is for people that do know, don't know, I mean, Project Lifestyle is my YouTube channel, which I do DJing. I haven't done it for years because things have taken over. So I don't touch it anymore, but I used to DJ for YouTube and, well, the funny thing it was, I uploaded it on my YouTube channel and then people thought Alex was also Project Lifestyle, <laughs> even though it's a picture of uh, yeah. emoji of me, which is quite funny. <laughs> yeah. So fr from that you started your CropFit journey. Yeah. Um, how did this start uh, and what are the next steps and, and yeah. where, how, how can this keep growing? I mean, you're, yeah. I, mean, I keep seeing people on, on Instagram and you're changing people's lives. Yeah. How does that feel to begin with? Well, it's incredible. I, like I said previously is that I started with wanting to make myself fitter and stronger and better body, but a great way to funnel that is to then helping others achieve the fitness that I have through good food, good training, and building those lifelong habits. So to create a program or programs to help people achieve that and see what impact it has on people's lives around the world um, is, is fantastic. It's like an incredible feeling. But where it all began, it's a long story, but um, I was full-time personal trainer, but I definitely had this mindset that I wanted to reach more and more people rather than just the one-to-one -one contact. Um, I got a magazine cover called Healthy for Men, not this one, but it was in 2015, at the end of 2015, and I had a lot of people asking me how do you achieve a body like that. And there was a, some balls starting to roll, momentum was building, so I started to just write down in a simple, humble Word document my training, my nutrition, um, and I thought, oh, I'll sell this, I'll make people kind of see what, how to achieve that fitness. And then kind of once I've done that, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the monster was born, the entrepreneurial businessman that saw a, a, like the vision of what this could happen was born. So, um, so then it just carried on from there. I, my, my very good friend, Bina, was like, I had, she came on to help me with the whole marketing and, and the products and the, the quality and everything. And then from there, it's just progressed further and further to 12, 12 week training programs, what from 12 weeks to one year in home training, gym training, male and female. They're all PDF versions. But now what I've been doing this year, a very slow, annoying journey, but I'm creating the CropFit app to wow, basically wow. bring those PDF versions into an interactive um, journey for people um, with obviously all the video demos, the voiceovers from me, just to take it to the next level, take the business, take the service, take everything to the next level to really help people make fitness a part of their life forever. When do you think the app will be ready? Well, it just kept, it keeps on going delayed and delayed, but you know, as a businessman, you know that these things happen, but I really honestly think that we're just like a few weeks away now, that's so brilliant. we will release it by the, before the end of this year, 100%. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got quite a lot going on. I mean, I, I look at your career and you've been a personal fitness model um, since 2015, you've done yeah. loads of campaigns, you've done loads of work with a number of companies, I won't mention all of them, but... I mean, Legacy, uh, Gymshark, Mark Suspensers most recently, yeah. um, Adidas, Ben Sherman, I mean, Fitbit, uh, the yeah. Coco Water. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are all these, all these companies that you've done work for. How do you manage to do all of that and your crop fit and your social media? How do you juggle your, your work-life balance? Does it sometimes get on top of you? Or, or mm -hmm. what, what methods do you do to sort of take a step back and just sort of have a bit of you time? Yeah, well, it's, it's a really good question and people ask it all the time. And it really is genuinely a challenge um, because inevitably you can't put all of your energy in every direction at once and you have to focus on a few things at once. So when I'm focusing on everything, sometimes 
my sleep is bad or my nutrition is bad because you can't do everything at once. So I do have to kind of go through phases of what is the priority at the time. Like if I'm doing lots of shoots and lots of filming, then you'll see that maybe I don't upload as much on Instagram and YouTube at once. Or maybe I don't get back to my crop fitters until the weekend because I've had a really tough week or something like that. So I think I'm really motivated in all avenues. Like you see a lot of people start their YouTube and then give up and it dwindles down. Like I have, motiv <laughs> I have motivation in every journey. Time is my only limitation. So I think it is just balancing it all together. And when I find that something like poor quality sleep or like not spending enough time with Sarah or things like that is having an impact, then I try to just bring things back in. I think sleep and m like mental clarity is so important. So I've gone through this phase of like not looking at my phone from nine on, or like, yeah, you try nine o'clock and then I've got like this one hour period before I go to bed where I'm not on my phone, I'm not doing emails and sometimes just that one hour period of time is enough for me to bring down my heart rate, relax, have a good quality sleep. Sometimes like, because I live in Surrey, which is like half hour, 45 minutes from London, I'm spending more and more time in London for events and meetings and workouts and filming and stuff like that. Sometimes that beats into my morning routine. But if I'm not going into London, I also work on a really good quality morning routine and focusing on myself and things like that. But ultimately my training and my workout time is my time if i'm not if especially if i'm not filming or anything but it's a really good time that i that's like my favorite time of the day okay so, um, so yeah. in regards to your sleep and obviously spending time with, with sarah yeah. and the nine o'clock thing's great i mean what other lifestyle choices do you have that you would advise anyone to do um well it is exercise like so many people are very stressed in their day-to-day -day life or like even like depression and anxiety and things like that um, and these things are becoming more and more popular and common um, in today's society so I think exercise and healthy eating a lot of people would say they're too busy to do this or too busy to do that but even just 10-15 minutes half an hour a day of just walking out in nature getting fresh air or having a good quality morning routine even if you've got to wake up a bit earlier these are like the, the number one things that you think aren't going to make a difference or it's going to add stress to your lifestyle, but it really does make a massive impact. Good food, good activity levels, a good routine, it makes a big impact. What, what do you wish that you knew now before you started? So if you could talk to the younger Alex from five years ago, what advice would you pass down to that, Alex, in regards to everything from, from training to your gym life to working out to lifestyle choices? I mean, if you could pass on yourself now to your old self, what would be the main thing that you could pass down to, to younger Alex? Oh, man, I've learned so much. <laughs> it's hard to choose. Well, three things. Three things. <laughs> I think, um, let's start with training, I think. Um, I think training, like now the way I train is really listening to my body, like the signals that your body has given you, you've got to listen to, aches and pains or stiffnesses and stuff like that. I've, I've had a terrible year of an ankle injury into a knee injury into a shoulder injury. People say I'm just getting old, <laughs> but I think it's just years of not listening to my body to now I'm having to like, yeah, I've, I'm now have to work on the rehab and balancing things off. I do a lot of body weight training now, but for the past few, few years, or even when I was younger, I was just lifting heavy, heavy weight, terrible technique. And back then, I wish I could just say, Alex, ignore that strong guy in the gym over there. It, like, it doesn't matter how strong he is. What, you need to work on your foundation and build it up. You've got to soar back. Stop squatting that amount. Don't do that deadlift with a rounded back. Like All of these terrible things. You've got to realize where you are and build upon that and ignore everybody else around you. And that's advice for everybody going to the gym or like starting their fitness journey now. It's a massive thing. You've got to just look at where you are. In regards to business and social media and stuff like that, I think, um, I think I've done really well to, to balance the, like, the jealousy and, the, and being envious of people above me and things like that. But 
I did go through really jealous phases at the beginning of Instagram and wanting more following and seeing people do um, all this success. Um, so I would just tell my younger self that just, just focus on you again, <laughs> same advice, but do you use maybe other people as motivation, but don't be jealous, they're on their journey. Don't focus on being in that person's position because you've got your own journey to carve through and every, every individual's journey is just so different to another, whether that's in fitness modeling, personal training, um, online business, like anything, like it all merges. I don't know anybody's career like mine where I'm balancing this CropFit business with looking to be a model and an actor and like, or what, like everything in, intertwining in different directions. Like your journey is completely individual. And just the last question to finish up. All yeah. Off. What's the impact that you want to have on the fitness industry? Well, I everything that I talk about every single day is the same thing I've been talking about every single day for, for years, which I think is authentic. Like what I'm saying doesn't change. It's, it's a belief. I want my following to grow to millions and millions of people so I can have this, um, I get this passion across to people. And that is um, the benefits that healthy eating, healthy training, like having a healthy habits every single day has on people's lives. Um, avoiding the quick fad diets and what doesn't work for you but works for somebody else and just having that impact on people to realize that they can achieve their results in fitness, in health, in body confidence, in business, in any dream that they wish to achieve. So I hope my channels and what I do every day of me chasing my dreams in fitness and business and in life inspires people to do the same in whatever their dreams are too. Brilliant, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment underneath if you have any other questions or whether you just enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up and please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.